Hello. Right, we're back. We're back to cover one of the most important things in the electricity unit. Whether you're doing National 5 or higher physics, then one of the most important relationships is the relationship between the voltage, the current, and the resistance in a circuit. How are these three quantities related to each other and how do they affect each other? So, if we have a fixed resistor, can you see that? Okay. If we have a fixed resistor there, then what effect will there be on the current in that circuit if we change that supply voltage? If we increase the voltage, then what effect will it have on the current? And what effect does that resistor have on how much current is flowing in the circuit? So we're going to do a wee demo. We'll do it um, by connecting the circuit up. Then we'll try it again using the FET website. And hopefully we will come up with the relationship between these things. The, the voltage, the current, the resistance. Remember, charge moves around the circuit. Charge carries energy. The amount of energy that each charge carries depends on the size of the supply voltage. We're going to use a supply voltage that will go up to 12 volts. If it is 12 volts, then each little cool of charge is carrying 12 joules and it delivers that energy as it goes around the circuit. The rate at which it delivers that energy, or the speed if you like, the number of coulombs per second that's flowing around the circuit is called the current. So, voltage is a measure of the energy delivered per coulomb. Current is the number of coulombs that flow past a point per second. And resistance is the opposition to the motion of that charge. You've maybe seen this little cartoon before. This is a lovely wee cartoon, it's showing you that the volts are providing the force to move the charges through the wires. The wee green amp guy is representing the charge trying to move through the wires. And the wee red guy with the word ohm on his hat is representing the resistor that's trying to oppose the motion of the charges through the circuit. Which nicely shows you um, what voltage and current and resistance are doing in a circuit. But we want to see what's the relationship between voltage, current and resistance. Let's have a go. Right, here's our apparatus then. I'm going to use this little resistor. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I've covered up its little label, but we'll find out what it is later on. We've got our power supply here, which varies between uh, 0 and 12 volts. And we are going to do that. We're going to vary. It's a DC power supply. At least we're going to set it to DC. And we can change it from 2 to 4 to 6 to 9 to 12. Strange numbering, but hey-ho, there you go. And we have two meters here. This one here is a multimeter, which I have got set to, that's it off, but if I turn it to, I want to measure voltage with this. I'm not going to measure any more than 20 volts, so I've got it set to 20 volts DC. And this one here, I am going to use as my ammeter. It can measure up to a maximum of 10 amps. And I'm making sure I've got it plugged in at the right place there. So, yellow for ammeter, mm -hmm. black one is going to be our voltmeter. So, let's get it connected up. So, there's my resistor. It's on series with the ammeter. Ammeters always go in series, so you can measure the current in the circuit. And then my voltmeter, the voltmeter is connected across the component that you want to measure the energy delivered or transferred to. So I am piggybacking my voltmeter across the resistor there and that is our circuit basically set up. And all we're going to do is we're going to alter the voltage. We're going to measure the voltage across the resistor and the corresponding current on the ammeter and then we are going to see the effect that increasing the voltage has. We're going to go 2, 4, 6, 9, 12 measure the corresponding voltage and current readings and then uh, see how we go on. Right, there's the plant, there's our circuit set up. Got our supply voltage here. There's our ammeter in series with the resistor and the voltmeter across that resistor. And we're going to 
change our lab pack voltage from 2 to 4 to 6 to 9 to 12 and measure the corresponding voltmeter and ammeter readings. When we do that, right, I'm going to turn on the lab pack. I've got it set at 2 volts DC firstly, and we'll see what we get for voltage and current. So, firstly, our voltage is 1.81. So don't believe what you read on the power supply. Although it says 2 volts there, you don't always get 2 volts. We're getting 1.81 and our current is 0 0.27. That's for the 2 volt setting on the lab pack. Let's jot them down. And we're going to repeat that at 4 volts on the lab pack. Turn on again. Repeat our measurements. 3.69 0 0.54 So, as we turn the voltage up the current went up, let's go again, this is 6 volts on the lab pack and we get 4, sorry, 5.2 and a fluctuating there 5.35 0 0.7 0 0.8 Okay, going up to 9 volts. I'm turning it off in between so the resistor doesn't overheat. So, but my lab pack's set at 9 volts, so we're getting 8 volts on the voltmeter at 1.2. That's 8 volts at 1.2. Okay, and the last one. Up to 12 volts, and we'll turn it on. And 12 volts, then we're getting about 10.5 and 1.56. That's kind of fluctuating there 10.5 and 1.5. Okay, there's all our results there, and I've got a final column in the table here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our voltmeter reading and we're going to divide it by our ammeter reading. The symbol I is used for current. Historically, the current was called electrical intensity, so the I has kind of hung about historically using I for current. So we're going to do voltage divided by current for each of those rows in the table. Okay, there's all the voltage divided by the current values in the last column there, and what do we notice? They're all roughly equal to about 6.9 or 7. So, wonder what that resistor is. There's our little resistor. Let me peel the label off it. It is a 6.8 ohm resistor. Hmm. The voltage divided by the current appears to give us the size of the resistor. Let's think more about that. So the size of the resistor is actually telling us the ratio of the voltage to the current. And it is written in its equation form. The resistor, the size of the resistor is the ratio of the voltage to the current. In other words, if we have got a 6.8 ohm resistor, then the size of the current that we get is 6.8 times smaller than the voltage is. In each of those rows there, the current is 6.7 times smaller than the voltage. That current there, 6.8 times smaller than the voltage, and so on and so on and so on. The resistance is the ratio of the voltage to the current. Another way of looking at this is to draw a graph of those results. Right, here is the graph of my results then. Remember, you might get asked to draw a graph in a final exam, so make sure, firstly, you label your axes. I've got voltage on the y-axis and current on the x-axis. Voltage in volts, current in amps. And then make sure that your number lines, your scales, are linear. In other words, they go up in regular amounts, and then they go up to at least your maximum values in your voltage and current columns. So, let's have a wee look at the results, and then we can plot our points. So, our first point there, the voltage was 1.81, and the current was 0 0.27, that's about there. Then we've got 3.69 and 0 0.54. 
difficult to plot these. You're allowed to be uh, out by about half a box if you're plotting a graph in an exam. Half box tolerance, it's called. Next one, 5.3, 5 and 0 0.78. I reckon that's about there. Then 8 and 1.2. That's a bit easier to plot. There it's there. And the last one is 10.5 and 1.5. Right, need to go up a wee bit higher. There it's there. Then, once you've got all your points on your graph, it's just a case of drawing a best fit straight line or a curve. Don't do a jaggy dot-to-dot -dot kind of graph, a best fit straight line or a best fit curve. And make sure you use a ruler. Now, our graph is a straight line that looks as if it goes through the origin. It's got a constant gradient and, if you remember from your maths, the gradient of a line is the change in the y-axis over the change in the x-axis. Now, we've got voltage on the y-axis and current on the x-axis. So the gradient of our graph should be equal to the resistance of the resistor. So let's pick two points, one at one end of the line, one at the other end of the line, and let's put in the coordinates of those points. So that one's 1.5 on the x-axis and 10.2 on the y-axis, and this one here is 0 0.3 and 2. And so if we do our gradient equation from mass and work out y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then we get a value for this gradient that's equal to 6.8 ohms. And don't forget, the little resistor we used in this experiment was a 6.8 ohm resistor. That's quite a good graph. That's quite a good graph. Hopefully I would get 3 out of 3 for that. Anyway, there's also another way you can do a graph which is much quicker and that's to use Microsoft Excel. I have put my table of results in Excel. I've got current in the first column and voltage in the second column because when Excel draws a graph, then the first column is on the x-axis. So just highlight all your data and then we want to insert a scatter graph. That's a graph just with the points on it and there it's there. And then we can change the title on it. Let's call it Ohm's Law Results. And of course, like any graph we do, it's important that we have to put in the labels and the units for our axes. So on a Mac, you would have to go up to the ribbon and insert your axis titles. I want voltage there in volts. This is much easier on a PC because you can just add these elements from the corner of the chart. I've got current and amps. And then I want to change these little markers, they're blobs just now. So if I right click on one of them, format the chart series, there's an option there to change your markers. I'm going to use some of the built-in ones. So marker options, built-in. I'm going to select a wee cross. And I want it bigger. And I want it in black. So I can change the colour. And there's my points. Now, right-click on a point, And we can add our trend line. We want it to be a straight line, so it's linear. And we don't want a dashed line. So... I want to change that. Let's firstly change it to black and then the dash type. I want that solid and change the width a wee bit, make it a bit thinner. And there's my line. Now here's the powerful bit of Excel. It works out the gradient for you. If I just right click on that line, then down to format trend line, there's an option on the right hand side there down the bottom that says display the equation on the chart. And there it, is, there it is, it's in the format of y equals mx plus c, let's make it a bit bigger, and m is our gradient, which was 6.83, because it's a 6.8 ohm resistor. That's a much quicker way of doing a graph. Anyway, that's the demo of Ohm's Law, that shows you that for a fixed resistor, the ratio of the voltage to the current is a constant value. R equals V over I. Now, before we go, I also said I would show you this on the FET website. So, we are looking for, just type in PHET into Google. We're looking for the Circuit Construction Kit DC. And this is one of the best ways um, for learning about simple circuits here. So, when you open this up, the intro will do. 
Um, you get a blank canvas, you can just pull out your batteries and your bulbs or your resistors and you can join them up. So let's make a little series circuit, same as we did in the experiment. And we can select whatever values we like for the size of the battery and the size of the resistor. So let's show the values and let's make our battery a 12 volt battery. And we've got a 10 ohm resistor. So, because it's a 10 ohm resistor, if we bring an ammeter in, then the current is going to be 10 times smaller than the voltage is. So, it's 1.2 amps. And also, it doesn't matter where we measure that current. The current's the same all the way around in a series circuit. So, remember, the size of the resistor is the ratio of the voltage to the current. V divided by I equals R. Now, we could change that voltage, or change that resistance actually. If we make that resistor smaller, let's make it a 6 ohm resistor. So the resistor is going to resist the current, so that the current is 6 times smaller than the voltage. And there you go, the current is 2 amps. And again, if we use our Ohm's Law equation, R equals V over I. Let's change the battery this time. Let's make the battery a 24 volt battery. We've still got a 6 ohm resistor, so you can see that the current is still 6 times smaller than the voltage is. Even if we go up to 60 volts, 60 volts, we get a current of 10 amps because R equals V over I. And on your relationship sheet, that equation is in the form of V equals I times R. So, if you multiply the current times the resistance, you will get the voltage. There we go, 3 times 20 is equal to 60. That's Ohm's Law. Have fun messing about with that FET website then. Great way to learn about circuits. We'll see you in the next one.